All right, everybody, this is Ross. Uh, in today's video, we're gonna talk to you guys about a fruit that I grow. It's called gooseberry. It is a, uh, a berry that's quite popular in Europe. And uh, for whatever reason here in the United States, we don't really have them widely available. And uh, you can see here along this branch, if I lift it up just ever so slightly, you'll see a lot of the fruits below the branch uh, dangling down. So they're easily disguised by the, uh, by the foliage, by the shape of the bush. It is a bush that they grow on. And I find that it's a really underrated fruit. They taste a lot like grapes. I have a, a harvest here of this variety. It's called Hinomaki Red. And it produces these red gooseberries that you see here. Get this camera to focus. So, yeah, there's different types of, uh, of gooseberries here. There's red ones, there's, uh, there's yellow ones, there is um, green ones. I have another variety here that we're going to look at in just a minute. Let me zoom out and show you guys the extent of this plant. It's uh, a few years old now, not really in the biggest size that they can get to. You know, these, these berries, uh, these plants can get to a pretty big size, like at least six by six, six foot by six foot. Um, they're in the ribe family, by the way. And why is that important? Because we have other plants that we're growing, other berries. This here is called the Josta berry. So we have a number of Josta berries. Uh, you can see the another Josta berry over there in the corner by the tree. And we've also got currants. We have red currants. Uh, there's white currants. There's pink currants. There's, uh, there's black currants. And between all those different currants and gooseberries, they're all in the same family, which is the ribes. And the Josta berry is the combination of the two. They've been bred to then cross the both of them together. And what you end up getting is something called a Josta berry, which I've yet to actually taste, but I have tasted the, um, the currants, we've done a number of videos on the currants, guys. If you're interested, check that out. But here we have some of the berries right next to each other. I find that they're, um, after a few years here in the ground, you give them enough organic material, enough mulch, your soil is, uh, is kept moist. Even in a quite shady environment, they will produce quite well for you. Um, so there is a shade tolerant berry that even in five hours of light as this plant is in, I'm getting really good harvest you should see my, uh, this is Hinomaki Red, this red guy here. This Trixia berry, the green one, is absolutely loaded. Uh, but because it's loaded, it has smaller fruits on it. So I guess if you had less fruit, the fruit size would increase. Obviously, if you uh, do some thinning, as an example, on other fruit trees, the fruit size increases. So let me give you guys a little taste test of these berries. I'm eating the red one right now. And it's really, really good. Um, as I said, very, very underrated. Um, I am a big fan of these berries. I put them somewhere. If I had to rate them on a scale of 1 to 10 compared to all the other fruits I grow, right? Because we're not just growing gooseberries. We're growing persimmons and jujubes and the other ribes I talked about, the honeyberry, the blueberry, the raspberry, the strawberry. Apples, pears, stone fruits. Uh, we have a kiwi vine right here. So, you know, out of all the fruits I've I've grown and tasted here, I would say that the uh, the gooseberry is a really solid fruit that can be eaten fresh like this, or it can be processed. And um, on a scale of one to ten, I think it's probably an eight. They remind me a lot of a tart or an acidic grape. So if you guys got some table grapes, you're in the United States, you haven't tried these things before, what do they taste like? In almost every regard, they taste like a grape. Um, they're crunchy, they have a similar shape, they have a similar mouthfeel, a similar grape-like flavor. Um, I guess you could say that they have a gooseberry flavor, uh, but they are quite slightly acidic. And the longer you let them ripen, the less that acidity, the less that tartness, it kind of mellows out and you get something a lot sweeter like you'd see in a table grape. 
and the texture changes ever so slightly from less crunchy to a bit more grainy and you end up with a fruit that in my opinion is uh is one of the best you can grow and the reason for that is if you really like grapes you'll love this fruit now my grapevines i'll show you those in a minute my grapevines ripen in august right uh, european grapes for the most part at least in my climate you can see them against the fence there those guys ripen in august so we have quite a long time before I can get a reasonable harvest off of my grapes. And if you really liked grapes, you know, you can see them here in these bags, by the way, they're, they're being bagged from disease because it's, it's tough growing grapes here. It's just very humid. But if you like grapes so much, why not get yourself an earlier version of a grape, right? Which is the gooseberry. It is significantly earlier. Uh, Right, today is uh, June 28th. I'm getting my first couple harvests here of these berries. So sometime in June and July, you get a harvest, and then the grape comes in sometime in August, and then you're kind of having a nice succession there of different grapes, if you could call them that, right? Then we also have on the back, the back fence, which you guys can't see, behind these apple trees, I have something called the muscadine grape. And that is a fall grape. So they ripen later in September and October. So you get a nice, at least here, starting at the end of June, I pretty much get grapes all the way till the end of the year, which is really cool. So uh, for someone that's a backyard grower like myself, it's really quite valuable. What else is really valuable is that the, the European table grape is just very difficult to grow. You need to have a lot variety that is very disease resistant and obviously a climate that's uh, really well suited to these particular fruits. The drier, the better. Um, here in my humid climate in the Philadelphia area, I run into a lot of problems with disease. So they're very difficult to grow. The muscadine grapes sometimes can be too late in the season to ripen. We may not have a long enough season for them. Whereas the, uh, the gooseberry is the most reliable berry in terms of something similar to a grape, right? So. They ripen early, they are disease resistant, at least here I have no issues with them, I have no pest issues with them. I protect them from the birds, I protect them from critters with just a net, and uh, I get myself a solid harvest every year reliably. Again, if you just put down some organic material, um, you know, always have them enough moisture in the soil, they're gonna do well, and they're gonna um, succeed for you, so for me, as I said, one of the best berries that you can grow. I'm a big fan. You can process them too. I'm sure a lot of you guys in Europe know all kinds of ways to process these things. There's probably wines that people make out of gooseberries. I know you can make good jam out of them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I want to thank you guys here for watching this little video, a short one here on the gooseberry. Um, as I mentioned, some of these plants can really get loaded down. And I highly recommend that you guys try growing them if you're in a climate that uh, is suitable. So thank you guys here again for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, please hit that subscribe button. Check out our other videos that we're growing on different fruits, not just the, the gooseberry, but some of the other fruits we're growing. It might be of interest to you. And check out our blog, figboss.com. We'll see everybody soon. Take care.